Hey everybody, it's Stephen Get Money Myrick here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about PvP for early game players. A couple weeks ago, I made a video where I talked about a VIP 7 account that I felt was the strongest VIP 7 account in the game, and how we could take two Transcendence Heroes and beat lineups that had four Transcendence Heroes. And so I put a call out on YouTube, and I said, hey, anybody out there have like lower level accounts, uh, newer accounts that I'd really like to discuss PvP on those and see what things are working really well and which things maybe aren't working. And so I got a lot of responses to that to those comments. So thank you to everybody that responded. But one that really stuck out to me uh, was this person named Bunny. Uh, they responded saying that they had an Inosuke, they had a Sherlock, they had a Tix. And to me that felt very natural for what a lot of new players are going to have. That development of going from a hero that can beat Sealand to a Tix you know, and then working on a little bit more PVP items. And so I reached out to them and it took a little bit of time to get this video together because of everything that's been going on with the void changes. Uh, but I finally got a chance to sign in and start talking about their account and talking about PVP for early game players. And honestly, like I really enjoyed doing this. This was pretty foreign for me to deal with like the lack of gear, the lack of artifacts, having to deal with not having a full team of 65s and which five stars you wanna be using as well as discussing some of the strategies and artifacts you may want to be using in place of what you have. I learned a lot doing this. I had a lot of fun. We got to challenge some pretty interesting players on server 914. So giant thank you to Bunny. Giant thank you to all the people that respond to that. If you're a newer player, hopefully you find this video helpful. If you're a veteran player, maybe you'll find it interesting just to see what newer game player, what newer players are working with right now. I will say they did take that Inosuke and they switched it to an Eloise which I think is a brilliant transition. You know, a lot of this video is just me talking about how wonderful of a decision I think that is to make for newer players. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive in. I also want to say that if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'd really, 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 really appreciate it. Uh, but let's check out this account and see what's going on on server 914. I want to start by just watching some fights and see what we're working with here. So we're going to go in Crystal Crown League and maybe watch a loss against a team that's around the same power of us. Let's go ahead and see how this fight plays out and see what we can work on. Uh, you can see we have the Eloise here and we're going up against some level 345 heroes and we've got level 350 heroes, which is nice. Um, but it does look like our Tix is getting shredded. <clears throat> it almost makes me wonder if in early game, if you want to be using an energy artifact on Tix, um, just in order to get that active off and reduce the attacks because you can see they've got a lot more sustain here with their lineup and what they're doing and so that was a pretty easy wipe for them uh, they are definitely working with you know, here we have two e5s and an e4 compared to three e5s uh, and an e2 and a nine star carry when we got ten star carry so i think it'd be fun if we can figure out if we can find a lineup that can actually beat this player um, and I want to start by trying out an energy artifact, and hopefully they have one. They do have a demon bell on the carry, and they have a energy thing on the drake. And so I think they're doing a smart thing here by using the Rogan, because no matter what, you're going to get this passive skill. Uh, increase all allies 10 speed and 10% crit damage for two rounds. So especially with the assassin, which he doesn't have here because he doesn't have the sword fight to see it yet, uh, but you know, doubling that bonus, it's just actually something significant. You know, maybe Fiona is relevant uh, with her shields. If you can get her attack up, maybe Tix is relevant. If he's able to just do a little bit extra damage. Uh, carries are most likely going to be pretty relevant. Maybe Oberon's um, Ignises. Maybe getting a six star Ignis in there would be pretty interesting. So it's one of those interesting things that I've never really thought about is like, okay, when you have one E5, or 2e5s, what does the rest of your team look like? Because obviously the majority of your stuff is going to be coming from your e5 heroes, but what can you add to the mix in order to get the most out of them? So if you guys have thoughts about what the best support heroes are to pair with e5s when you only have one or two, definitely let me know. Uh, we will be doing some testing, but yeah, heroes that passively do things like Rogan, carries reviving, those all seem huge. This account as well has an e4 Sherlock. Uh, and I can see right here we have some 9-star and 10-star heroes that we could feed and a Sherlock copy. I'm not going to go ahead and do that for them because I didn't ask for permission. But obviously there's room for some growth and even having the 10-star carry here uh, with some 9-star heroes. Personally, with having all these 9-stars, um, I would go ahead and use them right now. I would go ahead and get rid of the Rosa and put them on the Sherlock. I would get rid of 
uh, the nine star heroes, the Norma and this hero here and put them onto carry and get them up to E2 because every time you're just making those steps and making those progresses, it's helping your account. Whereas when they're sitting in the bag, they are not helping you uh, at all. Obviously you could be saving them for something else, uh, such as the fact that maybe they're getting close to, yeah, it looks like they're getting really close here to getting their V4. And so they're gonna want that 10 star to V4 Eloise. So that's completely reasonable as well. But uh, just something I always be keep in mind that especially when you're an early game player, like having a bag with a lot of heroes in it will hurt you. You can tell they are doing some things correctly because they almost have this V4 Eloise here, uh, but they only are sitting at uh, 2.8 million uh, Crystals of Transcendence. So that tells you that they are doing the right thing and swapping your spheres for Stellar Shards. That is a big, big uh, advice thing is do not swap your spheres or crystals of transcendence in order to get void heroes swap them for stellar shards i believe everybody should know that by this point but if you don't know that that is a massive massive difference there are people that have four transcendence heroes that can definitely lose to lineups with just one or two transcendence heroes if they are not converting those spheres into stellar shards as well as the flexibility of the stellar shards to move those around make different lineups make certain heroes stronger as the meta change it's just a massive thing so they're definitely doing the right thing there and i'm very excited for them to get this v4 eloise going through their actual pvp lineup let's see what changes we can make and one thing that is now catching my eye is this lack of gold. Um, let's see, what are they working with with gold here? So this is one thing that you're just going to have to suck up and start doing. And it stinks when you're a VIP 6 compared to a VIP 12 or 13. But when you're this low on gold and you have this many gems, you really do want to be spending gems on gold. I know it feels bad to do, uh, but like you will never... You will never ever get to a point where you have too much gold like i have many accounts and i could spend all my gold if i had it uh, so it feels bad to spend gems on gold because you think like the game should give you enough but it just doesn't um, and so if i was this person i would at least recommend going through and buying the 50 gem gold uh, account here but looking at the actual pvp lineup uh, again, what we want to actually do is upgrade the stone to a different stone. We'd like to get an attack attack stone on Eloise. That would be the best stone for her, uh, but we unfortunately can't get it. Same thing here. We've got a good stone on Tix, and we have a bad stone on Sherlock. The crown is good. Upgrading that crown will make her very powerful in PvP. Uh, going two, three, uh, four, two, two. I don't know about the the two here, the three here versus the two. Um, I think we want to go 2-2-4-2-2. Two, 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 two. I, th I think that's how we want to have this hero built. Uh, having resonance gear, obviously huge, making them very powerful, and that power spike they're going to get once they're able to get the V4 uh, is going to be wonderful for them. They're going to be able to do a lot of great things, but we don't have that right now, and that's okay. Uh, they do have the resonance gear on the ticks. They've got a great stone, holy damage attack attack. Uh, crit, crit attack can also be better, especially with the staff punisher, but it's a good stone to have. 2-2-4-2-2. Two, two, four, two, two. Good enables for PvP, though we may revisit that uh, depending on how things are going. The Sherlock is built pretty interesting because it's 2-2-1-2, two, two, uh, when since they're 95 they don't have any more. They definitely have the right idea here by taking one uh, on Sherlock. You're typically going to be one taking one, two, or three. You don't want to take CC removal on Sherlock. Uh, but if you look at their stone here, and it could just be in fact that they can't roll the right stones, they have an attack heal effect HP stone. So having Sherlock as an attack based hero isn't really working for them, as well as the fact that they don't really have the artifacts right now unless, and we'll think about it, unless we move the Staff Punisher onto the Sherlock. Because one thing I'm noticing is the lack of a speed stone on this account. Um, a speed stone would go very well. We'll actually go ahead and upgrade this one. And so I think having a speed stone and having a speed artifact will actually be pretty helpful for this account uh, because we can put this on the Drake now and we may, maybe, be putting some energy onto ticks. I know it feels bad to put that on the ticks instead of the staff puncher, but with how squishy the ticks was right now and not having the support, it may be a decision that we decide to make, but we'll hold off for now. Similarly, you know, maybe we put the Plate of Courageous on the ticks. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, you can see here we're low on gear. We don't have good stones on carry, and that's just the name of the game. When you start out, I kept looking for more artifacts or more gear, and it's just not there, everybody. This is what you have when you're an early account, and I need to remember that and, and live with it. Um, but let's go ahead and just do a fight with those small changes against that same player and see how it goes. 
So going back in here and seeing if the attack difference uh, makes any difference for us or not. Uh, it was this player. So we will set our lineup. Uh, we're going to want Sherlock here, Drake, and the Rogan. And the Rogan has some pretty uh, minimal uh, gear on them. Again, you're just going to buff from the Rogan and start the fight buff, which I think is a smart idea by them to have that. And so you can see that Tick's Clap is just killer against us. So like against this player, for example, they have a Russ, and I'm guessing Russ had this the highest attack here. So if we can actually find a way to lower the attack on that Russ, uh, that could be pretty huge for us. So what I actually want to try is doing a energy source on Ticks, and we can try putting the Stat Punisher on Sherlock and see how that goes. We can see how that goes. Um, and refight this opponent and see if this change of getting uh oh come on now see if this change allows us any difference whatsoever again those ticks actives are what's really doing damage against us here but you see we actually got the ticks ticks off active off first there and this is actually working out better for us still not great uh but ah uh, come on you potentially, you know, could run something like speed HP on the ticks. And so if you had like a wind god here to target uh, the Russell, that could actually also be pretty huge. So I'm going to take the speed artifact that we put on the Drake, and I'm going to put that onto the ticks here and just see if that targets the Russell and if that makes the difference for us in what we're able to do. Uh, we'll put a play the courageous here on Drake. And we will leave the Sap Punisher on Sherlock for now. You know, the idea behind an attack Sherlock is that they are going to be your lowest HP hero on your team. But there's a world in which, uh, you know, since we are going against a lineup where we don't have all E5s, Sherlock is not going to be our lowest HP hero. So therefore, he's not getting targeted by SFX. He's not going to be targeted by people. So I'm not sure that an attack Sherlock actually makes the most sense. We may want to go ahead and try like an HP Sherlock. Uh, after this fight and see how that goes. Okay, let's see who this ticks uh, goes after. So he went after the Rust there. Uh, so that could be, again, kind of big news. Uh, we will kind of wait and see this and see how it goes. But potentially that ability that we've lowered the attack on the Russell could make a difference here. Uh, we'll see if we still just get wiped by it. No, we're just getting wiped by it still. I mean, we, we took more hits, but it definitely wasn't worth the trade-off of not getting the active there. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go back, we're gonna put um, this onto the ticks. And then I wanna swap Sherlock out and make them one, 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 and put a plate of the courageous on them and just make them more tanky and see if that does anything for us. My guess again, this is my guess, that this Russell is just too strong for us. Uh, we could also put the demon bell, honestly, we should be putting the demon bell onto the ticks because the carry is gonna die no matter what, right? Whereas the Demon Bell is going to give some more HP to our ticks um, and help them survive just a little bit longer. The annoying thing, obviously, with this build as well is the fact that um, you will be swapping off your artifacts for your ticks, whereas the majority of the time you just want to, you know, keep the Staff Puncher on the ticks for void modes and stuff. The uh, Sherlock not having Unbending Will is definitely a problem, but we'll see. This Rust active is just a problem, no matter how we look at it. We're not going to beat this opponent, unfortunately. And that's just something we have to be aware of, I guess. Like, I think going after them with the ticks is a smart idea. Uh, once you get enough support to survive and uh, deal with that Rust active. But until you get to that point, uh, it's just wiping our team, unfortunately. So now our ticks is a little bit tankier, a little bit faster. And you can see uh, got even earlier on the... Rust there with the clap. As long as the carry doesn't steal our energy here, we'll get a nice big clap here. So we're again stealing more attack from Russell. Uh, this time the Rust didn't get his active uh, right away. Um, and he's not getting until round three. But I do have a feeling, well, let's see how low, much lower his attack is. Well, it's still plenty dang high. Well, can she survive? No, that was definitely the closest. You know, we can show up a fight that, you know, we actually think we can win. Um, it's not going to be that one as we've learned. Okay, so this one will be interesting. Let's do this fight because here we don't have the Russell at E5. And so when you don't have a Russell that you're going against, in this situation, I do want to use, um, I do want to be using the Demon Bell on 
the Russell on the uh, ticks here. And I do want to be putting the mm, Speedstone on Drake. And I do want to be putting the Energy on Carry. And I think we're going to be able to win this fight. Okay, we did find the player here. So this is the lineup they're working with. And you can see they have uh, five E5s. Okay, so we're probably going to lose. But I want to see how this fight goes. Because I think our E5s are better in the sense that I mean like that they have resonance gear and that they have you know we have the crown of fiona we have the v3 and i'm not 100 percent sure if this lineup really has as many stellar shards as we have so let's see how this goes this garuda active was huge but i'm gonna see if our fiona here can just carry the entire match oh come on fiona and then carrie's gonna get an active here still some energy which will be very nice oh yeah oh yeah that feels good Way to go, Bunny. Honestly, like I said, this was really fun. I had a lot of fun doing this. I had a lot of fun looking it over. I, I learned a few things. Hopefully you learned a few things from watching this. And I'll see you on my next video. Bye.